Well, I think with Resolve, it's one of those applications that has continued to add more and more features in there. And features generally mean that you are increasing capability throughout the, throughout the application, but there comes a point in time where you have to really reset and consider what it is, what it is that you're trying to achieve. What we started to look at was the way that the edit world has really developed over the last 10 or 15 years. And I think that whilst in the craft editing world there is a requirement for customers to be able to have access to all of the capability, fine tuning and finessing the edits, um, many different um, types of graphics, many different types of transitions, what we really started to focus on was, well, how do we get back to that element of speed? So what we decided to do was develop an entirely new edit page, and we called that Cut. And the, and the reason that we did develop that as a completely independent page was because what we didn't want to do was become destructive to the creative edit process that is still required. So Cut is really focused on how to get your footage in, how to get your footage into a timeline quickly, and how to edit it without um, wasting time or creating processes that slow down your overall output. Now the way that it works is that within the cut page, you have accessibility to all of the media. You can view that in a number of different ways, both in clip view, you can do that in list view, you can view that as an entire clip. What you can also do is you can take that media and you can actually drop that into um, what we call source tape, where you can see all of your clips along a single layer timeline. And then you can actually edit into that as if it was one clip, when in fact actually it's multiple clips. What you can also do is you can actually take that information and drop that down into your project timeline. And you can navigate backwards and forwards, up and down the project timeline. Um, but dive into points as and when you need to rather than having to zoom in, zoom out and scale the size of that timeline. We've also built in there an enormous amount of um, artificial intelligence as well where we're using um, the engine underneath so that it can predict things that you're looking to achieve. So for example, you don't have to be on the exact edit point to insert an edit. What will happen is if your play ahead is sat within a few frames or even a second or two from that edit point, it knows that you are trying to insert or overlay an edit in that, in that position. What you've also got as well is that you've got trim tools that are very quick and very easy to access, so you can put an edit point in, you can move that edit point up and down, you can slip and slide and trim those clips um, by using very simple keystrokes. So the whole process has become incredibly quick. Now the positive side of that is that once you get to a position where you feel like you have achieved that edit, you can then actually move from the cut page into the edit page and you can finesse that, that final project. So the point being is that you can step through, utilize those two edit pages in the way that you feel is appropriate to the type of project that you're doing, but remain non-destructive in that process. Now in line with the new edit features which are within Resolve, when we talk about speed and we talk about efficiency, what we also looked at was the hardware process. Now when you actually um, edit typically with DaVinci Resolve, you use your keyboard and you use your mouse. But what we started to think about was what if we could actually create a tool that could operate um, in an efficient manner but is pre-programmed and completely assembled to work with that editing environment. So what we came up with was the DaVinci Resolve editor keyboard. Now the editor keyboard has um, every function that is um, required within that cut page assigned to a specific key that is on that keyboard. Also there is, um, there is a jog wheel on there as well, a search dial that we can use to navigate up and down the timeline. We have the ability to insert clips and move those around using that search dial. We can flip between the source um, content and the timeline content. Um, we have the ability to add transitions and manipulate transitions. And all of that is connected by a simple USB-C connection that goes back to your PC. Once you plug that in, DaVinci Resolve knows that that keyboard is there and it works in exactly the same way as it would do with a keyboard and mouse, albeit that all those functions are specifically directed to the software. So with DaVinci Resolve 16, we are now in public beta, so you can go to the website, download a copy of um, DaVinci Resolve, um, and work with it in beta format. This will give you a better experience of this new environment that we're talking about. The DaVinci Resolve Editor keyboard is going to be due out around August time. We've kind of shown it at the show, we're talking to people about the new workflow. 
and everything's aligned that this will be available around about August time. The price is going to be um, $995, um, so it's accessible for most people in that edit environment. Thank you.